Hello everybody, this is Richard R.J. Eskow and we're continuing our zero hour readings series. We really need a name for that. So if you have any ideas, hit us up in the comments section of the video or uh, hit me up on Twitter, R.J. Eskow, E-S-K-O-W, or whatever. Just let us know however you want to. And in this week's reading, I thought we would read from a book that was a classic of sociology, Back in the 60s, it was uh, venerated by the young left. Uh, it is by C. Wright Mills, The Power Elite. It was a study of uh, power as it was distributed in the United States uh, in the post-war era and the era after the Second World War. And it is uh, a seminal work still today, even though the architecture and structure and composition of the people in power has changed a lot in the intervening 60 years or 60, 70 years or so since the book was written. Uh, there's a lot that still remains very germane today and um, what certainly the approach is germane. The question is, you know, do how do we adapt to changing circumstances? But there's some passages in it that uh, are uh, unchanging in their analysis of power and perhaps arguably even more relevant today. And I'll tell you what I mean. And again, I'm reading from The Power Elite by C. Wright Mills. Uh, quote, from even the most superficial examination of the history of Western society, we learn that the power of decision makers is first of all limited by the level of technique, by the means of power and violence and organization that prevail in a given society. In this connection, we also learn that there is a fairly straight line running upward through the history of the West, that the means of oppression and exploitation of violence and destruction, as well as the means of production and reconstruction, have been progressively enlarged and increasingly centralized. And I'll get back to that centralized in a moment. He goes on to say, as the institutional means of power and the means of communications, important word here, that tie them together have become steadily more efficient, those now in command of them have come into command of instruments of rule quite unsurpassed in the history of mankind, and we are not yet at the climax of their development. We can no longer lean on or take soft comfort from the historical ups and downs of ruling groups and work of previous epochs. In that sense, Hegel was it is correct. We learn from history that we cannot learn from history. For every epoch and social structure, we must work out an answer to the questions of the power of the elite. So what does that mean for us today? It means that in C. Wright Mills's time in the post-war era, there were nuclear weaponry was new to the world. There was spy techniques, uh, eavesdropping and so on. Uh, as well as massive military force. All those things still exist today, even if we don't think about nuclear power quite as much as we should because we're being distracted about other things. But Donald Trump still has his finger on the nuclear button and uh, we still have the power to annihilate the world multiple times over, as does Russia. But in terms of what C. Wright Mills says here, about uh, organization, about communication, about the means of oppression and exploitation progressively being enlarged and increasingly centralized. Of course, C. Wright Mills could have no way of knowing that the internet was something uh, looming large in the American future, but the internet provides un unprecedented opportunities for power, for control, for centralization, not just for a centralized and powerful government elite, and by no means does C. Wright Mills limit his definition of elites to government leaders. That's only the political uh, leadership is only one dimension of what he looks at. But the corporate world, the business world, has powers that no business uh, cohort, no generation of business people before ours could have imagined having the kind of spying power over people's everyday lives, having the power to manipulate public opinion. The, people, the media moguls of the past could only dream about the kinds of uh, manipulation that people like Mark Zuckerberg can impose on the population. They could only dream about it because the techniques didn't exist yet and because 
1950, the owners of NBC or uh, some other network knew at least that when they expressed an opinion, people understood that it was their network expressing an opinion. The great and unprecedented power of the new business elite today is the power to influence opinion without appearing to influence opinion at all. This covertness, this secrecy, and this ability to tell you that the old media moguls didn't have of telling you one thing and telling me it an uh, yet another thing and us never realizing that they were saying different things to different people and allowing their customers, which aren't you and me, we're the product, allowing their customers to advertise and say different things to you and to me, that's a kind of bending of reality that past media tycoons could only dream about.